John Jacquard writes, If your centre of gravity is F Lydian, then it's not true that G mixer Lydian has a void nose. You can prove this with compound chord. G7 in upper register, F major 7 in bass. GBDF over FACE in bass. And same thing with B minor 7 flat 5. There is no avoid note at all. This actually is the best sounding chord in the F Lydian. B minor 7 flat 5 in top register while F major 7 rings in bass. BDFA over FACE in bass. In this video you are thinking about things incorrect as if the C major chord was a tonal centre. Ouch! <laughs> I consider chord scale relationships a totally bogus way of teaching improvisation. There's no historical justification anywhere in the last hundred years to show that as a process for improvising. It's something, it's something academics created. It's a shortcut, and they've created a lot of damn shortcuts like showing chords in stacks, which is not harmony. They're just shortcuts. Chord scale relationships are cookie cutter teaching. Oh, okay. Improvisation has always been um, uh, uh, let the melody be your guide, embellishment of a melody. So, now, all of a sudden, we have tunes like Ornithology and Donna Lee, where the melodies themselves are embellishments. What the hell happened to let the melody be your guide? It's still there, only now, and this is my big bitch about chord scale relationships, is it's a closed-end system. No concept is good if it's closed end. It has to have infinite possibilities. That's, that's the test of a good concept. Let the melody be your guide has infinite possibilities. No two people will use it in the same way. Well now, since chord tones are melodic and the melody is your guide, what we have done in modern improvisation is trained ourselves to use the chord tones as melodies through, as in a process through the changes, as our guide. Hal Galper, a strong critic of chord scale theory, states that improvisation should be based on the elaboration of the melodic line only. His statement, let the melody be your guide, is based on the reasonable assumption that human beings hear music as a melodic line and not as stacks of chords. The current standardised pedagogy of teaching jazz improvisation as a process of merely synchronising scales with their appropriate chord symbols is only a shortcut for learning how to improvise. This approach is based upon principles neither scientifically nor musically sound. Jazz chord changes have four basic chord tones, the root, third, fifth and seventh. We are taught to think of these tones as moving through a tune in a vertical manner, as if all the chord tones can be heard separately and together at the same time. As the scientific research suggests, this is impossible. The ear can only hear one way at a time, in a linear fashion. To Galper, music flows from one melodic note to another through the chord sequence and therefore is not a closed system. He sees both the melody and chord tones as rhythmically inactive and so forming the basis for active elaboration around them. This active elaboration can be rhythmic, values higher than quarter notes, and the higher chord intervals tensions. His statement that chord scale theory is a closed system is probably more linked to the Berkeley method of chord scale theory than the Lydian chromatic concept. In the Berkeley method, a scale is matched with a particular chord, so for instance, G7 would be matched with G mix Lydian, and so you could state that it is a closed system, in that any elaboration of the melody is restricted to the notes of the mix Lydian scale, and those notes do not have to be chord tones but can be tensions. In the Berkeley system, the scale changes as the chord changes. 
However, this is not the case with the lydochromatic concept. Russell's argument is that all chords are linked to a primary modal tonic degree that is the parent scale of the chord. To him, unlike the Berkeley and the Barry Harris method, chords are not made from scales but are scales. When Galper states that there is no scientific method behind chord scale theory, Russell would state, what the hell is the lydochromatic concept if not a scientific method? Galper also states that chord scale equivalence is cookie cutter teaching. If you look at this extract from Chad LB, you can probably see what Galper has in mind. What we're going to do is we're going to take these four different phrases and we're going to create a single line using a bar from each phrase. So we're going to take bar one of phrase one, bar two of phrase two, bar three of phrase three, and bar four of phrase four, and put those individual bars consecutively and create a new line from that. So that line will sound like this. So that worked out really well, mainly because we're using this concept of melodic cells. Again, we're using these building blocks, and a lot of times you can put together these building blocks in different ways and it will still work out really well. Chad takes four worked out lines played over four bars of a C7 chord and then cuts out different bars and splices them together. Okay, I'll try and explain what I think Galper's main criticism of chord scale theory is using this line by uh, Chad LB. Uh, this is up an octave, remember, that's G. So you have actually got a voice lean line over the C7. You've got the G going down to the F sharp to that. G flat, which is F sharp, and then to G. So that's how I see the voice lean. So, go, so voice lean's all right. Uh, we've got a C7 chord against no key signature. This is so. This is most likely, I would call that a special function dominant, which you kind of get in blues, don't you? You know what I mean? You replace C with C7 in blues if you had a you playing a blues in C. Uh, this line here is. Uh, M26AA it's a Charlie Parker line which it goes slightly different to that and it usually has a definite way of coming in uh, he's repeating this line quite a lot you see this is the same figure always repeated once, two, three, four, five. It's, it's a bit too repetitive that if you listen to the way he plays it, it's very smooth. I just don't like that kind of smooth playing. You know, I like a bit more rhythmic playing. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, but he holds that note longer. He holds it for about three beats, actually. So I don't know why he does that. Uh, so I'll just show you Charlie Parker's version of this. Okay, so this is Chad LB's line. Uh, it's three chromatic notes. This first phrase is this first figure is three chromatic notes down, then back to the way he started. Pretty, pretty much round in bebop era. That uh, here he's going from C to this B flat because he's got he had the chord of C7 into the key signature was thing, so it was probably a C7 like a special function on the blues or something. You can never tell we Americans because they never put key signatures in. Uh, then we've got a converging figure on this G. So everything's around G, isn't it? We've got a strong line around G, and then he moves to that F sharp, doesn't it? It's voice leading. So it actually makes sense. Okay, so let's have a listen to the lines. This is Chad LB. Right, and this is Charlie Parker. So now back at Chad LB's line, with all these repetitive... This repetitive line here, look. I can really hear that you know, when I listen to it. It's just, that really irritates me after a few times. Uh, and Hal Galper would not like this because he'd say, you know, this cookie cutty, cookie cutting technique is not not a melodic line going through. Although I showed you that the voice lean does it does actually work from a voice lean point of view this one, this way, and also. Uh, Mozart did do things like this, uh, this cutting sections out. When he did waltzes, he did like a waltz for children where you, you kind of like cut a piece out and you, you build waltzes up like this. Charlie Parker's uh, main jazz technique is based on motives, lots of motives being played, although not like this. It, 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 with Parker, it, it, the, the music does tell a story, it's not just a, sticking a line together, and I think that's one of the things that I don't like about this. Uh, talking about Galper again, Galper says that 
cause scale theory is not scientific, and yet he bases his whole theory in forward motion on uh, sayings that musicians say, which is really subjective. I mean, some of the things he says, I could use other phrases from other musicians against him. I mean, he talks about, in, in one of his videos, he talks about, in, uh, you know, having an, uh, an imagination towards your instrument some, or something. It's all played in your mind. Whereas Charlie Parker actually said, uh, don't play the saxophone, let the saxophone play you, which kind of goes against what he says, you know what I mean? So this using musicians uh, as sayings, as some kind of theory, is just too subjective, you know what I mean? And he's saying that cause scale theory is not scientific, you can't push it back a hundred years and see, you know, which is true, It's, it, I mean, it was invented by George Russell. But the thing is, <laughs> inventions have to be, you know, if you were in engineering and somebody came out with an aeroplane like the Wright brothers which had never gone before you can't say well you know you can't complain and say well there's no there's no historical justification for the use of an aeroplane because you know we've never had one in the past you know it's just silly so it's saying saying things like that. what's important is it worked and the fact is that course scale theory is very popular isn't it? it has it has taken off now you don't have to like it if you don't want to you know what I mean but uh, to me, I always just see chord scale theory as being able to identify notes. I think it's very good for that. Identify the best notes to play. Now, you don't have to use those notes. You can use whatever you want, but that's what it, do what it does, you know. So basically, I hope I've given you an idea about what Galp is saying and this closed system. So we don't want to be... We, if we talk about chord scale theory, we don't want to be giving... Uh, Hal Galper ammunition, do we? We don't want to be saying it's a closed system, you see. And that's the problem that I have with John Jacquard's uh, comments. Okay? Okay, so this is John Jacquard's comment that was at the beginning of this video. Uh, I, w I just want to say that if you're writing a comment and it's quite long like his is, the best thing to do is to put it in notepad, right, or Word first, if you haven't got Word on your computer, you'll have a notepad. Just write it down in notepad and just check everything. Check your spelling and check uh, that what you're saying is actually what, you, what you're meaning. You know what I mean? Because he's, he's making little spelling mistakes and little mistakes all over the place, John. And he, he, he didn't have to do that if he wrote it out in notepad and then just checked everything and gone through it himself. So this is what he says. He says, if your centre of gravity is f lydian right, so the scale we're using is f lydian then it's not true that g mixer lydian has a void notes, and that's wrong straight away. g mixer lydian if he's saying g mixer lydian he's actually saying a horizontal scale. All horizontal scales are going to have a void notes. You just can't help it. Uh, you know what I mean? Because g mixer lydian means g is the tonal centre, not f, f is the tonal centre. So it's, it's, it don't make sense that little bit. What he meant to say is, if your centre of gravity is F Lydian, then it's not true that the second mode of F Lydian, which is what we're talking about, which is the equivalent of Mixer Lydian, but it's not Mixer Lydian, as I said, modes and scales are different things. So it's a second mode, has a void notes, then it's not true. Well, the thing is, I don't agree with that at all anyway. You can prove this with compound chord. G7 in upper register, F mid 7 in bass, G, B, D, F, A of F, A, C in bass. And same thing with B minor. The thing is, he said that. Has he checked it? Has he checked what he said? Let's just check what he says. He says, you've got no avoid notes, right? If you write it down like this, G, B, D, F of F, A, C in bass. Okay, let's write that down. Okay, so this is what John says. F, A, G, B, D, F of F, A, C in bass. Now, let's have a listen to it. Let's have a listen again. Hmm. Now John says there's no avoid notes, but that doesn't sound very nice to me. I can definitely hear dissonance there in that chord. Now if you look at it, you can see where the dissonance is, can't you? Just let me... It's there. It's that F. That F is creating a minor knife dissonance with that. Actually, it's, it's 
kind of like two octaves up, but it's kind of making a, a distance with that E because it's only it's a minor ninth and an, oct an octave and a minor ninth above, isn't it? If we take that off, let's just take that out. Okay, so I took it out and let's have another listen and see if it sounds better. That sounds a hell of a lot better to me. Just taking that F off the top sounds better. Listen again. See? Much more relaxing than that, isn't it? Now let's just go back to John's comment. So John says to me, you can prove this with compound chord, G7 upper struck to F music. Well, you haven't proved it at all. It's, it's just completely wrong what he said. And because he said that now, why should I trust anything else he says? This is where I'm saying what you about getting your comments right. Write your comments down in Notepad first and then go through it yourself and make sure it's right. Because he's wrong there. That's wrong. And if you look at the Lydian chromatic concept, see, George Russell doesn't put that note, doesn't put the... C at the top. Do you know what I mean? In in, uh, in John's comment, it was in F lydium. This is in C lydium. It's the same thing. He put that C on top, and, and George just doesn't do that. The chord is built like that, right? <laughs> it hasn't got a C on top. But the thing is, there's always going to be problems, even with a lydian chromatic concept. Let me try and explain this to you. Okay, so I've just written out F lydian. Now, if you look at the scale of F lydian. You've got a half tone between the notes B and C, this area, and a half tone between the, the notes of E and F. So in the Lydian scale, it's between 4 and 5 and 7 and 8. You're going to get half tones. Now, those half tones are going to be... They're going to show themselves when you build chords up. When you build chords up, you're going to get minor knife dissonance wherever they happen. And that's what's just happened when I've just showed, showed you with John. And that's just what's happened with John. Can you see you've got the seventh note here and you've got the root here and you've got that half step step happening, just like on here, you see. And you've got to watch that out. That's going to happen all the time, even in Lydian scale. So you can't say a Lydian scale has got no avoid notes because it has because it is built exactly the same as, as like the major scale. The only scale that would have no avoid notes because of the full tone above every note would be the whole tone scale, wouldn't it? The whole tone scale would not have half steps between its its uh, its scaled notes like we've got here between the fourth and fifth and the seventh and eighth. A whole tone scale is just all whole tones, right? So you don't get a half step above even if you're building a chord. The only trouble with the whole tone scale is the whole tone scale is symmetrical and you can't build chords out of symmetrical scales because you end up getting the same thing all the time, you know what I mean? This is the advantage of having a, a scale which does have half steps in different places. You can build different chords, you see. So he's wrong, isn't he, John, where he says, you know what I mean? He hasn't really thought, looked at his own comment and thought gone through it. So uh, I just want to go on to something else that he says. Right, he goes on to say, tonal music language, functional harmony, is absolutely different uh, than that of the Lydian chromatic concepts. Write it out before you print it. There is no such thing as tonic or subdominant or dominant functions in LCC, Lydian chromatic concept. Avoid notes in functional harmony has to do with destroying the function. Say we were in functional harmony, tonal music key of C made, the functional blueprint was subdominant, dominant, tonic, and then he gives you three ways of writing it out. Remember, these are all tonic chords, these are all dominant, these are all subdominant. Let's just carry on to the next page. It says D minor 13th, the upper extensions work. The upper extensions work only if you're playing it as a chord. If you're playing scales, you're going to have problems, aren't you? Because if you're playing a scale, right, which is based on that, if you play the, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, if you play an F, you're going to hit that tension, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? If you're playing that as a chord, you're going to if and you play an F, you're going to hit that tension there. Do you know what I mean? It only works that as a chord, not not if you're soloing over it. That's why you don't solo over over these big chords. It's like Hal Galper said, you know, stacking 
stacking chords in stacks in, in, that isn't harmony you know what i mean he's actually right what you're saying because if you stack a chord up like that right from the beginning you know unless you're actually harmonizing something you know w w against the melody not improvisation you're not gonna have any problems but if you if you actually play playing that and then somebody's soloing if they hit a f they're going to cause an, a minor ninth or a, a minor second dissonance with that e do you know what i mean and same with that top one if you play a c they're going to cause a, a dissonance with that c so what he's actually saying don't make sense to me g13 the upper extensions destroy the function what he's talking about there when he says the upper extension destroys his function uh, C note is a void note because that C's creating a minor ninth. You see, you've seen it there in the harmony. The C's creating a a, a, a void note with that B, but you're still going to get you're still going to get it when you improvise, and you're going to get them all over because if you play an F on that, it's going to create an half stone between that F, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So you haven't got the C, you've got the F as well if if you're playing that as a chord. So, so you place with G thirteen sharp eleven, yeah. And then he's just talking about playing Lydian now. He's talking about chords, but if you're talking about soloing of the chords, you've got to think about something different. And when I'm talking about, you know, writing those chords out in my table, I'm actually talking about soloing over chords. Next C major up extension of the tonic function replaced with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all this. See, I disagree with this. He says there's absolutely no such thing as function at all. You have unity. But you haven't got unity. You've never got unity in any scale because you've always got those half steps. And when you're soloing over chords, you've got to be thinking about those half steps, half steps all the time, as I've just showed you. You can, play, you can play a chord and then play an upper line, and it's going to clash, you know what I mean? So if you mind top raised to while left is in bass. He keeps coming out with this, but he's not quoting what, Russell says, look what Russell says. See, Russell don't put that top note in the bass. It's just C up to A. And Russell's not saying there's no void note. He's saying that that is the best chord. The scale is the best thing. But you've still got to use your brain and look to see what notes are going to clash when it's played in scale form. You can't just, just play them because you're going to get minor ninth clashes wherever, the, depending on where these notes are. Do you know what I mean? If you're playing that E there, Sorry, you're not going to get it. There. What is it in this? It's between E, F, into F. Let me see. Let me see. C. It's going to be between B and C. So if you're playing that B there and you play a C on top of it, you're going to get a minor ninth interval, aren't you there? And it's saying with a G, if you put a G on top of that F sharp tension, you're going to get a minor, a minor, a uh, minor second interval, aren't you? Depending where you put it, you know what I mean? If you play underneath it like that, you're going to be okay, but. It don't work like that music, you know what I mean? So you you got to think about about things like this all the time, you know what I mean? Chord scale theory has the void notes, and chord scale theory all came from George Russell, you know what I mean? So you can't say that the these void notes don't happen. So similar minor version D dot. He goes into all this, but I've, I've kind of like lost interest in what he's saying because. He's, he's actually to me he's got it wrong. This he's actually th he's thinking wrong, not not me. So uh, I'm hoping that you've all got this because I don't really want to spend that much time on this. You know, I mean, I've actually read his comment and you can read it yourself and, and work it out. Just go through what he says and work it all out. You know what I mean? Thing is, is looking at his comment, he talks like an advanced player. He's just not thought about it enough, I, I don't think. So there is a void notes in the Lydian chromatic concept. It's to do with how the notes are played as a soloist over the chords. You've always got to watch out because there's always those half, half steps in Lydian scale between the sharp four and the five, right? There's a half step. And between the seventh and, and root, you know what I mean? You have the half step. So you go, you're going to get those half steps which are going to give you minor ninths or minor second intervals which are bad. It's just it's just the way it is, you know what I mean? You can't you get all, all these people saying there's no avoid notes in the Lydian chromatic concept. It's better. It's better as it plays. It's better. It more it makes more sense than the the playing in the major scale. But you can't say there's no avoid notes because if they weren't if they weren't avoid notes, they would have modern play. You know all these modern people. You know Bar, uh, what's his name Barry Nettles of you know who wrote the the uh, Berkeley method of chord scale theory. He would have spotted that and said, let's all play, you know, Lydian. But, you know what I mean? It's just easier to, to transfer it into C major for those people, you know. Okay, so uh, we'll get back to my, 
my uh, table now and try and finish that off, okay? <laughs>